For example, if you look in nature, what you see is that different animals can have really different lifespans. Um, a mouse lives only two years, but a canary lives 15 years and a bat can live 50 years. So these animals have extremely different lifespans in spite of the fact that they're about the same size. And even if they're living in the same place, they have very different lifespans. And the reason they have different lifespans is because they have different genes. So that says right off the bat that there's something about these genes that's influencing their lifespan. So the idea that I had was, look, if there are genes that actually control aging, then if we change these genes, we ought to be able to produce an animal that lives longer. And then if we um, study the genes in more detail, we'll be able to understand how aging is controlled. So we didn't study this problem in people. Instead, we studied it in my favorite little animal, C. elegans, which is shown here for you. That This is an old individual. Now what C. elegans is, is a very tiny little roundworm that lives in the soil. It's about the size of a comma at the end of a sentence, very tiny. Um, and they're really good for study things like studying aging because they grow old and die in just about two weeks. Um, and we wondered, could C. elegans teach us anything about aging in humans? Because obviously we don't just, we like our worms, but we don't really only want to learn about the worms. We really want to learn about people and higher animals, mammals. So the question, of course, is could studying aging in one of these little roundworms teach us anything about humans? And I thought that the chances were pretty good that it could, uh, because the idea that I had was that aging was actually going to be controlled by genes, uh, a set of genes that would be controlling aging in all animals. And the reason I thought that is that many biological mechanisms that control other aspects of biology, like how a muscle cell differentiates or how an egg is fertilized or how a cell divides happen in the very same way in all animals. And in fact, lots of genes that are important for people were first discovered in these little C. elegans. Okay, now we were very optimistic starting out that we would be able to find genes that extend lifespan. And the reason was that there already was an animal that had an altered gene that lived longer. And this uh, was a mutant that had been identified by Michael Klass and studied by Tom Johnson for a long time. These worms lived about 30 to 50 percent longer than normal. So we set out to look for long-lived mutants and amazingly we found that mutations that damage one single gene in the worm, a gene whose name is DAF2, doubled the lifespan of the worm. So here you see a diagram of the um, uh, the lifespans of these worms. So what we did is we took a whole population of worms and we just let them age and asked how long they lived. So these, these here in black are normal worms here. And you can see that by day 30, the end of a month, they're all dead. So the fraction alive, which you see is over here, is now zero. Whereas at the same time, our mutant worms, the worms that have only one gene change, all the other genes are the same, are st almost all still alive. And it's not until about twice as long um, until 70 days when they're all dead. So it's incredible, really. We just changed one gene, all the other genes are the same, and the whole animal lives twice as long as normal. And the really magical thing about these worms is that it's not that they you know, get old and then just hang on. They actually age more slowly than normal. So here you see a, um, a normal C. elegans worm, quite beautiful, crawling along on its bacteria. So this is a movie of these worms. What you're going to see first are the normal worms. Here it is, a normal worm when it's about the age of a college student. It's three days old, so it's a young adult. And you can see that they're very healthy. Now what you see here is the mutant worm, the one that's going to live twice as long, when it's also a young adult. And what you see is that it's very healthy. That's important. It's not sick when it's young. Now here, prepare yourself, because this is a little bit sad, is the normal worm in just two weeks. You see? That, now the head here is moving. See the head? See it move? There. But otherwise, it's just lying there. It's in the nursing home, basically. The old folks' home. You're going to see some more worms in just a second. This is worm is dead. And again, this one, you see its head is moving. But otherwise, it's just lying there. So these are what worms look like when they're old, which is just when they're two weeks old. And here is our long-lived mutant. One gene change, that's all. And look at it. See, it looks healthy. It's moving around actively, and they look much younger than the, the worms. And this is like actually looking at someone who's 90 and thinking that they're 45. That's what it's like. So it's, it's like a miracle, but it isn't a miracle. It's science. OK, so we want to know everything we possibly can about how changing one gene 
can uh, produce this miraculous appearance.